Good day, folks. This is the Great Judy Green Pastures Farm. We're doing a a new little uh, procedure here tonight. We're moving the mob. But when we move them into the new paddock, <clears throat> we're actually making a real narrow lane here. It's probably I don't know 30 feet wide. We're gonna run all 320 of them up this narrow lane. We got a patch of love grass back here. That's they never really graze very well. It's at the very back of the paddock. And so we put in a paddock this morning up there. It's a little tiny one. And we're gonna lock them in there. They're not in the paddock yet. They're still in the way. They will, they'll, they'll keep going here. And uh, boy, the cattle are just fat. They didn't like it very much this morning. We did it this morning. So what we're doing is we're just making the cows work for us. They're waiting for me to lead them up here. <laughs> They're still trying to get in from back there. The lane's full. Woo! They don't like walking into the sun. Anytime you run cattle or move cattle into the sun, they don't like it. sun blinds them they can't see Woo! Yeah. I think it's clear up here to the far end yeah here it is <laughs> I'm beginning to think I was seeing things. Yeah, here they come. So we got a, all we have is just a, a handle right here. And uh, this is the paddock right here. And we're gonna, there, open that up. This is hot. This would be the most pressure this paddock's ever seen on this point right here. Good deer. There's a lot of love grass here that's already been chewed on by the deer. You can see it. Man, is it. That sun is just brutal. September 24th. And it feels like July 24th out here. We're, we're dry. But we've got a ton of forage. <laughs> they don't like this love grass. We're going to lock them in here though. For about uh, 30 minutes. When they all get in here, I'm going to close this gate. They're not gonna like it. You see, if you can get some impact on here, and it, it is shady up there. They shouldn't be complaining too much. You got shade. But uh, we're only gonna leave them in here 30 minutes, 320 head, and uh, just let them kind of beat it up. And then we'll give them their full size paddy. So this, this wire you're looking at right here, they, they're only on. Well, that strip's only 100 feet wide. Oh, here they come. Look at them. Just a whole line of cattle. Calves. <laughs> oh, gosh, they don't like it. Like, just give us the whole paddock. No, you all have to work. So what we're going to do, our cows have to work. We're only asking them to work for 30 minutes. Woo! Well, there's a pretty little bull. Man, they are just screaming. See, here's the back of the paddock right here. 
I'll get back here. Neighbor's beehives are over there. Got five of them. That one's a tall one. Let's have a lot of honey in that one. <laughs> yeah! Oh, here comes a pretty calf. That old 50. Man, he is a chunk. Look at that. He's got a big chunk of meat. Wow. He might be a macho bull status right there. Get away, girl. Well, look at that pretty bull. Yeah, he's hiding. There's another one. Oh, that's a steer. That's a pretty darn good looking steer. We clamped him. I wanted to give a, well, I'm thinking of it before I uh, forget, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, the Stockman Grass Farmer Multi-Species Grazing Conference. It's going to be uh, in October. I believe it's like the uh, 15th. It's around the middle of the month. Anyway, you, you can go to our website, greenpasturefarm.net, or, or you can go to the Stockman Grass Farmer website. And uh, hit the uh, there's a there's a link there that you can sign up to. Anyway, it's going to be held at Jackson, Jackson, Mississippi, and it's a two day. I'm going to be teaching that. And for those of you all who want some really good quality one on one time to get all your questions answered, this conference is going to be it because it's only it's limited to like I think it's only 26 people. So you know you're not, you're not going to have. Uh, you have plenty of time, plenty of access to get your questions answered. <laughs> Those cattle. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! They're not real crazy about this. They're in there so tight, you can't even hardly walk through them. That lane is still just packed full of cattle. But the boys are gradually working them up here. We've been uh, spreading hay today. We had uh, some areas on one of our lease farms that uh, Johnny had done a little work with the skid steer and so we put some seed down and took the, the Greg Judy baling roller out there with some old two-year-old hay and uh, the landowner and the boys and I we we got some seed down and then we, we put some more grass or some more uh, hay on it it's looking really good so we just need a rain it's gotten just powder dry you know and of course you get 90s in September that's 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 not normal either see they're starting to eat now I guess they figured if they bawled long enough we would finally move them like, all right if you're not gonna move us I guess we'll eat well, I tell you those slick ones are just pretty to look at my goodness you notice the really slick ones, they don't have any, that they don't have near, I mean, I shouldn't say they don't have any, they don't have near the fly load on them. And the ones that's got a little bit more here. There, the boys got them in. See, that's the end of the paddock right there, that blue post. They're going to be in here tight enough. Now uh, Connor's grabbing the wire. He's going to lock them in. <laughs> I 
So this is what you call an inclusion zone. So you basically, you're putting the animals in a small area for a very short period. And uh, with the trampoline, the manure, and the urine, you, you change the uh, biology, and you change the species of grass makeup in that paddock over time. So the theory behind this is each time you move your cows, before you just turn them into the whole paddock, just give them a little bitty area. You know, eighth of, herd this size, but we've got them on about an eighth or a sixteenth of an acre right here. And uh, it's hot right now. They're just kind of standing around. They're probably, well, most of them are full. You see that cow's full. All of them are. You, don't, you can't see any uh, death triangle sticking out on the side of them. But you wouldn't want to leave them in here all night. Um, you know, there's not enough forage in here. And there's no water. And as hot as it is, you sure wouldn't want to do that. But it doesn't hurt to do it for 30 minutes. And now the cows are all like, okay, they're not going to move us. I guess we'll eat. nice to uh, listen to them. All I can hear is that ripping noise. It'd be interesting I mean, to see what this looks like in 60 days, but you know, the, the idea behind this is if you always make the cows work on just a little piece each day, and rotate, don't do the same piece the next time you're in that paddock, just keep rotating. Over time, you can impact your whole farm with this kind of density. And it definitely changes the makeup of your plants. This love grass is getting hammered, which I'm loving. We'll have more beneficial grasses come up in here. They're not too happy with us. No, they're not. <laughs> Over there in the corner, just stand there looking at us. <laughs> like, what are y'all? What are y'all doing to us? Give him that, give him that mean glare. I didn't think you're ever gonna get him up that way. Decide they want to stay back over there. So okay. Yeah. Well, probably get them and then. Yeah. But yeah, they didn't want to come in here. I think they're starting to get on to us. <laughs> We've only done it twice. <laughs> well, maybe they'll get broke to it. You think? I don't know. Either way, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. They don't have a choice, do they? No, no free ride here. They gotta, they gotta it earn. does, and it really doesn't take that long to do something like this. No. It's one roll, one, one, uh, one roll of poly braid on a reel and a handful of step-ins. Yeah, they're, uh... They could go take off that paddock yeah, and that way when you take up the lane, they'll be moved. That's a great idea. So we've got about, uh, I don't know, around 10 more minutes, and then we'll be moving them out of here. But I uh, really like the condition of these cattle. Uh, I wish we would get a rain, but, you know, you can't make it rain. And uh, we're just so fortunate to have grass to graze. And I had a guy on YouTube this morning go, well, Greg, I'd trade you your dry for my dry. And I'm thinking he's in a whole lot worse shape than we are. Um, I did want to make a comment on uh, one of the guys. And I'm not, you know, I'm not sitting here to badmouth anybody. I'm just giving, giving y'all some ideas. Um, and I did the exact same thing that he did years ago. And uh, basically what he said was he was out of grass, and uh, he had a big place. I think it was, was it a thousand acres. Anyway, he had several cows. I forgot the number of cows, but he said, I'm done. He said, I don't have a choice now. He said, I've got to open it all up. Just give him the whole place. And that's what I did in the old days. And that's not the thing you want to do. 
when you run out of grass, um, first of all, there, there needs to be some planting before you run out of grass. You know you haven't had a rain for, let's say, 60 days and the grass is not growing back. That's a good time to be selling off some cows. You don't sell the whole herd, but you can sell off the bottom 20% of them. Definitely sell all the steeders. And um, then you've got, and, and then combine them, combine them into one herd. Don't have two herds. Uh, I was talking to somebody the other day. I think it was Greg. Greg Brand said he was on a farm. The guy had 10 herds. Boy, that'd be a booger, wouldn't it? Trying to manage 10 different herds. But uh, anyway, combine your herds. And when you open the gates and give them the whole farm, thinking that you don't really have any other choice, boy, you're really behind the eight ball then. I mean, you really are. Because they're going to eat that whole farm off where it looks like a putting green. And then that's going to hurt you. That's going to hurt you bad. Um, when the rains do come back, now that the cattle have just basically stripped your whole farm, it may take half a year for that farm to recover. Or it, out west, it'd take maybe a year or maybe two years. So don't don't open up the farm and give them the whole thing. Keep rotating and uh, cut your numbers. You know, you gotta you got to get rid of some animals. And if you keep rotating, you'd be surprised. Those cows come through that. You may be able to come through that drought and still keep, you know, a good percentage of your cow. But when you open up the whole thing, they chew it down. Uh, that's almost probably the worst thing you can do. So just wanted to share that with you. And by all means, I sure don't want to be poking fun at somebody because I did it myself and just, I really got burned when I did it. I can still remember that day, that, that summer, and probably the worst one of my whole grazing career. So just wanted to share that with you all. <laughs> These cows, they are so full. I mean, they're kind of eating if they want to, but they're not really that hungry. Well, folks, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here, and uh, we're going to be taking that lane up here pretty soon. And we're going to remember this little spot right here on this corner, and uh, we'll see if the composition changes, because we're going to continue to do this on each paddock. Make the cows work for 30 minutes, then roll the wire up and give them the whole paddock just a really simple thing to do and uh, Ian you know back years ago he called this inclusion this would be called, considered an inclusion zone so they can't get out of it they're in it tight and you're just using the animals to, to put down some biology I'm gonna end with that heifer right there God. Hey. honey you are a beautiful beautiful thing Wow. I don't know how you make a heifer any prettier than that one. Unless you look at that one right there. Or that one. Golly. There's some pretty ones in here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and sign off, everyone. Hope to see you all at the uh, Stockman Grass Farmer School. That's going to be in Jackson. That's coming up the middle of October. Check out our website, greenpasturesfarm.net. Uh, there's a sign up there. You can click on that link and maybe I'll see you all in Jackson. Take care, y'all, and hit that subscribe button on the way out.